Hey, listen, to change the subject, and I don't want to play, play moderator here, and Frank, you may bring it up on, uh, on, on Thursday. If, if you don't, I want to bring up with five minutes left of the show, your relationship and the rest of the panel with Arnold Palmer, the king of golf, who we lost uh, on Sunday. I, 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 was, I was very blessed. We went down to Latrobe, Pennsylvania, where he was born and raised, and he owns, he owns it. He owns Latrobe, Pennsylvania. And we went to an Italian restaurant, and I was the darkest guy there. <laughs> so, just, you know, that's, you know, it, it, they should just call it Wonder Bread uh, Latrobe, uh, or, or Wonder Bread Pennsylvania. Anyways, I met him, and he was just a beautiful guy. And so he, 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 he would have breakfast, and then he'd go play nine holes. And the golf course is fucking amazing. And, um, and I'm going to try to be as fast as I can. I got 3.2 minutes. He, so the next day I interviewed him. First, I interviewed his brother, uh, who was his, uh, um, uh, you know, promotion guy. And he had hired a guy who was a journalist for the Pittsburgh newspaper in the 50s. And this guy wrote, uh, you know, this guy was a junior uh, writer for the, the paper in Pittsburgh. And they sent him to Latrobe, Pennsylvania, because they, they said, you know, go check this guy out. I mean, this, they say he's a phenom. And, you know, because he was a junior guy, golf was not the big fucking deal. You know, it's baseball and football in the United States and college sports. So he went, and um, he wrote about Arnold Palmer, and Arnold Palmer liked him. They called him Doc, not because he was a doctor, because his, his parents owned a drugstore uh, and with a soda fountain. So they called him Doc. So I met this man, and they, were, they, became, they became best friends and in their 50s. Arnold Palmer hired him to be his press agent. And so I interviewed Arnold Palmer. And, you know, he was a crusty, tough, but beautiful man, very, very nice. But I said to him, Arnold, this is the way I was brought up. Uh, great men make great things happen. And the thing, that, uh, the, the thing that impresses me the most about you, Mr. Palmer, is that, he goes, please call me Arnold. I said, okay, Arnold, I, I, is that when you made it big, your father was the groundskeeper here at La Trobe, uh, Pennsylvania at this golf course and the first thing you did when you made it the first thing you didn't buy yourself a Maserati a Ferrari an airplane you bought this golf course and gave it to your dad as a gift and to me Mr. Palmer that's a stand-up guy because a father can take care of 70 kids but 70 kids can't take care of one father and he got emotional and you know when I think about that I get emotional because I had the best two days of my life there he invited me to be an honorary member of his golf course and, and to have him pass away. And he's my dad's age. My dad's 87. I had, um, I had my parents over for uh, lunch this uh, Sunday. And, uh, and, and to find out that he passed away Sunday night, it, it, really, it, it really fucked me up because, you know, life goes by at 100 million miles an hour. And um, I loved uh, Arnold Palmer. Uh, it's the number one drink that we sell. And... Uh, to be able to meet him. In, in fact, I think here on NSS we're showing the interview. Uh, to, to be able to meet him uh, was unbelievable, and he was, and his first major victory was here in Canada at a golf course where I was a caddy at the Western, uh, Western uh, Golf Course on, uh, on um, St. Philip and Western Road, Royal York and Western Road. Was that the Canadian Open at the time, Frank? Yeah, Canadian Open. He won. The, that was his first major championship here in, in 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 Canada. So when he was when he was getting going, he shot a hole in one, and and the press wasn't there when he shot this hole in one. Uh, not there at, at another at another. It could have been there. I don't remember the exact one, but he's telling me the story. So the next day uh, at the same at the same hole it was a par three. Uh, the press happened to come there because they wanted to ask him how the fuck he did it. So he says, well, I took this, and I don't know what it was, five iron or, or whatever he took, a seven iron, and I did. You know what the fucking guy does? He hit another hole in one. With that strange swing of his, man. And it yeah, worked. And, and, and he told, you know, they, they told me a story that uh, Mr. Hogan was a very um, harsh uh, and very bitter guy, and, and uh, Arnold Palmer really looked up to him. And he he used Ben Hogan clubs, and Ben Hogan embarrassed the shit out of him at an event. So when he went home, he scrapped those fucking clubs and never used them again. <laughs> and that's why Arnold Palmer became uh, a spokesman for a long, long time for Callaway.